Hello from Becky and me. Welcome to the programme. First tonight, it's played its part in protecting our country through two world wars. But now it seems RAF Marham in Norfolk is being pitted against another British airbase in a new battle, this time for survival. Marham had appeared safe from the cuts outlined in last month's defence review until the campaign to save the RAF's other major tornado base at Lossiemouth in Scotland began to gather momentum. Well, in a moment, we'll speak to the MP for South West Norfolk, Elizabeth Truss. But first, Malcolm Robertson is at RAF Marham. Malcolm, a worrying time for people there. It is a worrying time, but then it's also a worrying time for the northeast of Scotland because it looks as if RAF Kinloss will close and nearby RAF Lossiemouth is also under threat. Now, between them, those two RAF stations employ more than 5,000 people. A similar number are employed here at RAF Marham. Now, it was generally felt that Marham was probably the more likely to survive, but at the moment in Scotland, there's a huge political campaign to keep Lossiemouth open, a more vociferous campaign than is taking place in England. But here in East Anglia, the feeling is that the economic argument is certainly on the side of Marham. When it comes to marshalling the troops, Lossiemouth appears to be winning the propaganda war. Thousands joined a protest march through the Scottish town yesterday, campaigning to keep the local base open. They fear their squadrons of tornadoes will be moved to Marham in Norfolk, with a final decision on which of the two RAF stations survives being made in the new year. In the opposite corner is Elizabeth Truss, whose southwest Norfolk constituency includes Marham. She's aware the personalities involved could play on emotions. The brother of actor Ewan McGregor used to fly tornadoes at Lossiemouth. They're heavily involved in the local community. Um, we're standing outside the gates of Lossiemouth here, but you won't see any married quarters behind the wire here. All the married quarters and all the service uh, families live in the local community. And there's big political momentum too, with the leaders of all four of the main parties in Scotland speaking up in favour of Lossiemouth. If both RAF bases were to close in the northeast of Scotland, that it be the biggest single economic blow since the closure of Ravenscrate. RAF Lossiemouth started life at the outbreak of the Second World War as a training base for Oxfords and Harvards. RAF Marham came into operation a quarter of a century earlier as a landing ground for home defence planes during the First World War. Both bases now house four squadrons of Tornado GR4 attack aircraft. More than 2,000 of Murray's 56,000 residents work at Lossiemouth. More than 5,000 of the 85,000 people who live in West Norfolk work at Marham. Unemployment in Murray is currently 4.6%. In West Norfolk, it's more than 7%. They may be less vociferous, but the backers of Marham believe they win the economic argument hands down. Not least because BAE Systems employ 450 staff here. Their job is to maintain and service the aircraft. Not just Marham's tornadoes, but Lossie Mass as well. And to transfer that facility to Scotland would cost in the region of £50 million. Pounds. Now, does that make sound economic sense? At Stratton's Hotel in nearby Swaffham, around 10% of their business comes from Marham. And in a straight fight between the two bases, they believe Marham holds the aces. Monday to Thursday we have contractors that are coming in from all over the UK to come and service Marham, but also we have um, reunions with RAF personnel that come to the hotel. Earlier this year, thousands were on the streets of Downer Market to welcome home service personnel from Marham who'd recently returned from Afghanistan. At Reed's home store in the main street, they've doubled the number of staff employed to more than 50 since it opened five years ago. The loss of their local base would have a huge impact. It would be devastating both for, uh, for Reeds and for, for the town as a whole. You know, the town is... Um, uh, there's a meetings going on with the local retailers in the town. Well, obviously, we are in the middle of a recession. Times are difficult for any retailer, and you've got to be on the top of your game to, to succeed. Lossiemouth may be making more noise. Those campaigning for Marham hope the fats will speak for themselves. Malcolm Robertson, Anglia News. Well, as mentioned, listening to that in Westminster is the MP for South West Norfolk, Elizabeth Truss. Uh, Ms Truss, thank you very much for joining us this evening. When I spoke to you earlier today, you were just off to see the Secretary of Defence, Liam Fox, about uh, presumably this very matter. Have you got good news this evening for RAF Marham? Well, what the Secretary of State for Defence has made very clear, and I asked a question today about it in question time, is that 
He will go on the basis of the economic and military arguments. He doesn't believe that the politics should come into it. Well, it was quite an impressive turnout at RAF Lossiemouth at the weekend, but should a PR campaign supported by Ewan McGregor be allowed to influence the outcome? I don't think it's right that it's politics and celebrity that dominate this campaign. It should be about where is the best military location, and RAF Marham is very well located for Afghanistan. Where do we have the skills base? We have it in West Norfolk. It would cost 50 million to move it elsewhere. And should we really, in a recession, be moving jobs from an area of higher unemployment to an area of lower unemployment? I think that's wrong, and that's what the case I put to the Defence Secretary. But Ms. Truss, do you think it's even right that we should be debating it in this way, one against the other like this? It just seems to be, to be wrong all round, because certainly RAF Lossiemouth, they feel that they have a case as well. Well, uh, there is an element of that, and I think it's unfortunate that we have a debate and we don't know when the decision will be made exactly. However, the RAF are being reduced to six squadrons of tornadoes and clearly there is, there is room for cost saving. We all know how difficult it is at the moment with the deficit. My argument, though, is that this is an area of higher unemployment, West Norfolk, than the Scottish equivalent, and it makes economic sense to locate the bases here. Elizabeth Truss, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. An airman who was on his way back from a tour of duty in Afghanistan has been killed while on a rest break in Cyprus. His comrades from one squadron, Royal Air Force Regiment, returned to RAF Honington in Suffolk on Saturday. The airman, who's not been named, is believed to have died after a boating accident in Cyprus on Friday. His family have been told. The family of a teenager who was murdered in a Luton park say his death has left them heartbroken. 17-year-old Michael Simwanza was stabbed to death at Kingsway Recreational Ground 10 days ago. In a tribute, his family described Michael as an extremely loving and polite young man with a great smile.